Let's do a uh, quick walk around. Uh, I know you saw it in action uh, yesterday. Um, just looking at some of the external gear. I've got a Max Expedition dump pouch here, medium dump pouch. That's just clipped on with the um, D ring that comes on the uh, Max Expedition pouch. I've got a one of the daisies here. I got a little carabiner through it, and I got a U dig it tool and a small wash rag, face rag. I have on the removable uh, sleeping bag straps here at the bottom of the pack. I have a uh, Thermarest self-inflating mattress that I didn't have on there yesterday, but I did put on there uh, today so you could see it. Uh, we'll see later inside the sleeping bag compartment. I do carry uh, not a sleeping bag down here in South Florida, but I do carry a poncho military poncho liner, and I use that as my sleeping bag um, here in South Florida because most of the time it is pretty warm out. Walking around to the back of the pack, you see some of the uh, features. You see the air escape mesh, and that worked out really good yesterday, and temperatures in the 90s. Um, the uh, shoulder straps fit very well, and again, this pack can be adjusted. Uh, this torso compartment raises up and down. I think it's set pretty much pretty good for me, uh, but uh, I'll mess around with it and um, go from there. There's one of the uh, trekking pole attachments there in the front, in the back rather, and uh, the other one is right here. Okay, there's your hip belt pockets. <clears throat> like I said, I got things in there right now, and we'll pull them out and take a look at what I have. Right now, I just wanted to give you guys a walk around of the pack so you could see some of the um, close-ups of it. Um, I do have a rope here that I was messing around with. Um, you can attach a rope. It can go right through this strap here. You could bungee it on, whatever you wanted to do. It's good to have some rope. I carry that rope in my car. I don't know if I'm going to attach it to the pack right now. And then I, I like to carry this Columbia sun hat also close by in case I need it. Uh, very nice grab handle for the pack right here. Uh, internal water bladder compartment. Going back to the uh, front of the pack, there's your top lid. Again, there's two pockets, zippered pockets on the back side, and then one internal mesh pocket um, on this pack. This is your mesh outside pocket, which I have. I have a good amount of uh, gear stuffed in there. My MSR towel, my head buff, uh, my rain poncho, more knife, uh, microfiber towel. And so that's just showing you some of the uh, craftsmanship of this pack. The buckles are really nice. Uh, everything seems to be working pretty smooth. They're easily adjustable. The stitching is all top notch on this pack. Um, you're not going to go wrong for $135 for this um, Kestrel 48. Um, I think it's worth every penny. Uh, again, I haven't had it too long, but uh, knowing Osprey and getting some feedback from other YouTube subscribers um, speak very highly of this. This pack is uh, used on the Appalachian Trail uh, by a lot of hikers on the Appalachian Trail, and it's got great reviews in that regard. The uh, hip belt was really nice. Uh, the adjustments are quick and easy to make. You just pull on each of these tabs. Uh, your sternum strap again is no nonsense, easy to apply, sits nice on my chest, uh, doesn't, didn't sit up on my throat. Along your shoulder pads here you have these little uh, points here. I have my whistle tied out, my signal light. Um, this is like a bicycle signal light. It's got two modes to it. I like to keep that on there in case I want to be found. I put my water bottle on a, you saw that yesterday, on the little, little carabiner with the zip tie. It seemed to work pretty good. Some people said they didn't like it. Uh, I'm going to keep it like that for now. 
Um, my military sidewinder light, I may, a couple people said it looked too uh, military-like, so I could, you know, keep that in the pack or put it on after something happened. Um, so let's get into the body of the pack, see what I have packed in here, uh, see the gear that I have, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, guys, I unsnapped the uh, thermarest pad from the sleeping bag straps, which are here exposing the bottom uh, sleeping bag compartment and inside there I have a poncho liner that you can see I'm not going to pull it out right now for the purpose of the video but it is in there and that's a military poncho liner that I could use as a tarp uh, or sunshade protection uh, wrap up in it and sleep uh, down here in South Florida you really don't need too much um, too much uh, uh, strength of a sleeping bag you know, you don't really need a sleeping bag down here. And so in my hammock, I'm good with just that and the thermarest. Okay, moving on to the front mesh pocket. Um, MSR towel, you guys saw this in my uh, last video, my head buff that I wear, uh, a microfiber towel, uh, my Mora knife. A roll of cordless toilet tissue, a 511 uh, VTAC storage bin with a multi-tool uh, octane, Gerber octane, and my Spyderco knife. Okay, so that's in that front mesh pocket. And then last but not least in the front mesh pocket, my redhead uh, rain jacket, zippered rain jacket. All right, moving right along to the uh, side, one of the side mesh pockets here for a water bottle. I have a stuff sack in here um, with some items in it uh, that you guys saw yesterday. One of those um, SOL uh, survival, one of those SOL survival kits, some tape, a couple of um, snap lights, and the Silcock key uh, that I talked about yesterday to access uh, water in buildings. And so right now this pack is just in this side pocket here. Okay. All right. Staying on the same side here, I'll do, undo this uh, compression strap. That accesses the side zippered compartment, which hopefully you could see uh, right here. Side zippered compartment. And in this side zippered compartment, I have a um, boonie cap, signal bandana, some high vis uh, paracord, probably about 20 feet. Uh, my life straw that I'm going to. Um, replace with uh, my Sawyer system and a hundred feet of paracord and that's it for that side pocket. All right in the next mesh pocket right here on the other side in this 511 Holder. I have the Pathfinder school water bottle and cup. Water bottle. That's a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle and nesting. And that's a 25 ounce cup, 25 ounce cup, right here. All right, guys, in the next side pocket, the opposite side pocket, I have my Becker. BK2 knife, 
the sharpening stone, the different types of sharpening stones here all in one. Uh, I have a video on this. I'll put it in the description box. Some people have asked about it. And I think that's it for this side pocket. So the knife and the sharpening stone. Hey guys, while we're on the subject of the knives, this is the Becker BK2. Uh, it's, it is pretty heavy uh, to tote around in the uh, bug out bag. It is a very heavy duty knife. I may uh, switch this knife, this whole setup out and place in the bug out bag my buck knife here. Right here, I have a video on this knife too. A very, very good knife. Um, not as hefty and big and heavy as the Becker knife, but nonetheless a great uh, knife to have in the field. Uh, definitely would not do me wrong. Super sharp. Um, can do some light batoning with it. It's got a nice thick spine on it. Um, can grip it fully with my hand. Got the safety uh, there for the blade. It definitely strikes a fire steel really well. And um, so I may switch to this knife only to shave off some weight. Hey guys, on the um, front top lid here, you have these two compression straps here, one and two, that hold that lid down. And then that lid has an internal mesh pocket that we'll look at uh, the inside in a minute. And then when you spin it around, spin the pack around, and incidentally, there's attachment points on the top of the lid uh, to place you know, you could tie off some, some gear off to the top also. And then in the back, there's two zippered compartments in the lid, and I have gear in both those sections and inside. We'll take a look at those in a minute. All right, inside the underside of the lid, there's a nice size mesh pocket with a zipper. Uh, I have in there a braided clothesline that I have a video on this. I'll try to find it and put it in the description box. But you could hang this up between two trees or whatever. Um, and as you wash clothes, you could stick them in between the braids here and hang them out to dry. T-shirts, bandanas, basically whatever you wash. It's a nice little nifty thing to have in the field. And then I have this uh, hygiene kit that I scaled down a little bit in a small Coglins bag. And inside there, I'm not going to open it. Toothbrush, toothpaste, razor blade, and some Dr. Bonner's soap uh, in there. And so that's my hygiene kit. I think there's some uh, aspirin in there as well. And that's it for the inner side, underside of the mesh pocket. Okay, guys, on the uh, back side of the lid, the top lid, on the top zippered pocket right here, um, I have a, a map of Florida. And then in there, I have my Right in the Rain book. I don't know if I showed you guys the inside, but uh, it's a all-weather notebook, Right in the Rain. And then I have a calculator in there, the Not a Not car card, a Not card, the calculator, and I have some pens, sharpies, and a pencil, and that zips together. Nice little piece of kit to have in the field. Okay, in the bottom pocket of the lid, I have a plastic baggie with some deep woods off. I have a small fishing kit emergency fishing kit from Be Prepared to Survive. I think I have a video on that. And then I have a bunch of fatwood sh uh, shavings and pieces of fatwood from my friends at Hagwood Fire Starters. And then I have two homemade starters that I made. Uh, I have a video on these. These are 
cotton rounds coated with uh, wax that you could scrape off and they'll take a spark and I think I had one of these stay lit for like 15 minutes or so um, and so I have two of those in, in this kit as well this Hagwood kit and I have a video on the Hagwood Fatwood as well next item in the uh, that bottom so uh, top pocket is my little coffee tea sugar salt pepper kit just a Ziploc bag with a bunch of um, items in it that I could easily access and um, make myself a brew in the field like you saw in the video yesterday. Also in that pocket is my Sea to Summit cup that I used yesterday, the folding cup. I think this is a 16 ounce cup. And again, it folds down. I could put it right up in there. Or st Yesterday I even had it stowed in my cargo pocket and it's a good cup hot and cold when you need it. Plus you could eat out of it. Okay, we're down on the hip belt pockets. This side here, would, if you had to pack on, this would be the left side pocket. I've got my Strike Force Fire Starter, or Fire Steel rather. You guys can see this. And then inside there, there's a little lid you could lift off. And I've got some fire tinder in there, a fire starter in there as well. And that stays close by and that all clips back together. And this kit has a built-in striker as well. This is a really good fire steel. I uh, highly recommend this Strike Force. Uh, if you're going to buy one fire steel, this one is, or something similar to this, is it's got a big uh, chunk of... Uh, Phariseum and a really good striker. My Brunton, my Brunton compass, and I can't open it because when you're filming, your fumble fingers. There it is. Brunton compass with a mirror. Bandana, toilet paper, and then I was talking about this yesterday, just a small um, self-aid or injury kit, a couple of band-aids, some uh, cleansing towels, a pair of gloves, um, some duct tape, two packs of duct tape, and then a bunch of uh, two by two band-aids and regular band-aids. Um, in a little Ziploc bag you can keep right on your hip belt and you don't have to go into your main first aid kit and so that's the items in that uh, left hip pocket you hey guys in the right right hip belt pocket I have a blueberry crisp uh, cliff bar a Petzl headlamp two brightness settings and a mosquito head net and that's it for that pocket all right guys before we get into the main body of the pack um, back in the water bladder compartment I put in a large piece of heavy mill plastic and I put in a drum line or garbage can garbage bag large garbage bag garbage bag okay that's all I have in the uh, bl water bladder pocket those two items all right guys now we're gonna get into the main part of the pack the main body of the pack um, the top loading section uh, has a drawstring and basically you've got a really wide cavern hoping you guys can see this let me check the camera i think i might lay it down lay the pack down and pull the stuff out i think you can see it better that way yeah let's do it that way and again i'm tweaking things inside here uh, as i pull them out i'll talk about them real quick and let you know my thoughts what i'm going to do um, one of the things i have a fairly thick and large 
uh, first aid kit with a lot of gear in it. I have a video on this um, kit. It's got the Israeli bandage in it. It's got a lot of um, medical gear in it. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is put something a little more geared for backpacking and hold this kit in my car or in a, uh, when I travel and therefore making it a little bit less bulky inside here. Okay, so this, this kit, this medical kit I may replace. Put that aside. Uh, my, my cook kit that you guys saw in the video uh, that houses the Kettleist, the, you know, the GSI Kettleist, the Esbit stove. Inside the Kettleist is my Soto microregulator stove, uh, the sippy cup and lid, uh, and the fuel canister all housed in this um, little pouch, Coglin's pouch. Okay. Catadin water filter. In case you're wondering on the model, this is the, uh, the Catadin Hiker. I think this is good for at least 200 gallons. This is brand new. It's never been used. All the um, attachments are in the bag with it. So if you need a pump filter, um, the Philip Nalgene bottle, this Catadin is a really good investment uh, to have. Uh, next item to come out of the bag is my hammock system. And this is my DD hammock. I have tons of videos on this hammock. Uh, this is the Bishop sack that I talked about in the video. Uh, basically a Bishop, Bishop sack has an opening on each end. I could just open it up. It's like a stuffed sack with two openings on it. Open up one end, pull it out, hang it up on, around the tree, then open up the other end, hang it up. My hammock is inside of a, another compartment in there. It all pulls out, comes out of the skin, and you're ready to hang. Very quick setup with this. Uh, I have some videos on this as well. But this is my hammock system. It's my main sleeping system for here in South Florida. And then my... DD three, uh, three meter by three meter tarp. This is a really oversized tarp. Uh, covers the whole entire hammock, or I could pitch it uh, itself if I just wanted a shelter. I also have made this into a, like a tent type shelter that I have a video on. I may attach it in the uh, description box. And it's got all the guy lines in it. Uh, the ridge line, the pegs, everything is in this stuff sack with it. <clears throat> okay, this is just a thin stuff sack, not completely waterproof, but uh, just a nylon stuff sack. And contained in here is extra clothing. Won't open it up, but there is a long sleeve and a short sleeve dry fit shirt. There is a pair of uh, long, uh, light green camping pants, like a, uh, you know, like a redhead type pant, like a microfiber type pant two pairs of socks, uh, and two pairs of underwear are housed inside this bag. Okay, very easy to grab out of the top loading pack. Um, and then my food that I'm gonna be redoing uh, soon, this is the Bridgeford sandwiches. Actually, I'm gonna keep these out because I need to uh, eat these and change them out. So my food's at the bottom of the pack. And last but not least, The full bag of uh, breakfasts and uh, oatmeals, uh, some tuna in there, and then the dry uh, macaroni dinners. There's some uh, Idaho potatoes in there, uh, quick baked potatoes, uh, mashed potatoes rather, and then some spam. So I have to go through here, check the dates on this stuff, and redo it. So my food kit I am going to redo. And then there is the opening of the pack. Again, you could fit a lot of gear in here if you pack it right. And um, so by eliminating a couple things, uh, I think I made this a little lighter, taking out the Becker knife, uh, taking out the boonie cap, uh, replacing it with this super lightweight um, Columbia cap, sun cap. Um, I'm gonna go through my hammock and tarp, make sure there's no unnecessary items in there. And um, then again, go through my food kit 
and check that out and then repack everything and this bag is uh, ready for service. Okay, guys, let me know if you have any questions or comments, um, things you might add or, or take away. Um, definitely like to hear from you, uh, the YouTube community on this, especially guys that have been out hiking a lot and have used this type of system, this top loading system. All right, thanks for joining me, guys. Hope this video helped you. Um, Take care and stay ready. Anthony signing off.